So this video is going to be about the latest changes of the ES Accelerator. So there obviously are always changes. Every single year, the EIC is publishing a new work program, and that means the rules might change, the budget, the deadlines. There's always going to be changes. There were a few smaller changes in the main proposal templates. So obviously, they changed a few things that were actually redundant, so it's good because I noticed that in my templates, after the changes, I actually removed at least two things that I had marked as being redundant. So for example, asking for a market, in a non-market section, basically asking for the market twice or asking for the team twice, stuff like that. So this is nice. So they clean it up a little bit. They removed the grant first part. So before you had the option grant first, grant only, blended finance, equity only. So I explained all of that on my website and in different videos. Grant first is gone now, which is interesting. And there's also probably going to be some changes when it comes to the blended finance, because I guess they're still trying to figure out how exactly to make sure that, yeah, you want to give companies equity finance, but you also want to make clear that there's going to be a process to get that equity funding and it's not going to be the same as for the grant or there's going to be some differences there. Clearly, there's a due diligence process that has to be handled in a certain way. So I'm guessing they're still figuring that out, but they removed grant first. The most changes I saw from 2023 to 2024, obviously, is the financial annex because they changed the budgeting to a lump sum program, which I guess is supposed to simplify the project tracking. So when the project is funded then how it is tracked and managed but in reality funny enough it made the preparation a little more difficult because now you have a much more complex spreadsheet so when it comes to the main spreadsheet they actually simplified it so this is the financial spreadsheet but when it comes to the budget planning spreadsheet now we have a new one and this is this one and this is only one of the tabs but it's the most important one but what you can see is now you have to split up if you have employee in cost is it a senior scientist a junior scientist a technical personnel administrator administrative personnel or other. So you have to split that up. This is a little bit annoying because you basically have to plan the budget already. And after you've planned it, now you have to distribute it into these parts as well. It's kind of an extra step, which I would feel is unnecessary. Maybe it's actually useful to just use the other one and just put everything there. It seems kind of weird that you have to distribute it. This is a private company. This is not a research institute. There aren't specific salary levels as you have with a public institution or university. So clearly, if you have two different employees that have a similar position that they might not have the same salary it might not even be similar clearly it's performance based but i think a lot of these public institutions universities they're so used to having a status based salary that performance based i don't know i guess they took that template probably from different research programs but you have to do that and then when it comes to equipment you have to split that up as well you have to talk infrastructure other assets and then other goods and services services for meetings and seminars dissemination activities consumer boss it's not really startup talk. It sounds really like it came from some research framework. They probably literally just copy pasted that. But then again, I'm so focusing on the accelerator, so I don't really know the other programs, especially the research ones for universities. But yeah, it's a little bit annoying as an extra step, but you can actually greatly simplify it if you have an interconnected spreadsheet where you're simply able to just extract the information so you don't have to do it manually. And you have to do this for every single work package, which is a little bit of the annoying part. So if you have nine work packages or six or whatever, then you have to do it for everything. And then a few other things to actually look a little more simple. So it's interesting. It feels like they made it 30% simpler, the financial part, so the whole financial annex, 30% simpler when it comes to the things that were already there. But then they made it about 70% more complicated just by adding these extra spreadsheets with a lump sum funding. But that's pretty much it. So except for a few other changes when it comes to the main proposal in step two, of course, there are a few other things. So for example, the video is now also part of step two, which I think is a good idea because it gives the applicants the ability to update the video because if I was an evaluator in step one or step two or step three I would always watch the video this is the first thing I would watch I would say okay I have to now evaluate this company they put in the proposal watch the video three minutes hear the CEO talk hear the CTO talk this is going to tell you so much about the team because you know what they say a picture says more than a thousand words and a video says more than a thousand pictures because a video just has so much information especially if someone is speaking so it's great so now if you have a bad video in step one it's a zoom recording you want to check if you can even pass in step two you can replace that video with a better one or you just put in the same one or maybe accidentally in the step one video you said something about having five customers but now you have 10 so clearly it would be great if you can update that 